Hi, this video is uh, for Mimi, just to show like how I might handle uh, rendering like a character or an object or something. Um, so I have here just a quick little example scene, and um, it's just some you know, some blocks of geometry to sort of represent like a basic character. If I was doing the rendering in Maya, um, I would just use Charles's um, Lights Camera Action script to you know, get something working in Viewpoint 2.0. Uh, grid, grid, grid. There we go. Uh, like this. So, oh, and panels, perspective, VP stage cam. The difference between the perspective view um, and Charles's camera is that when I am in the perspective view and I rotate around, the lights don't go with me. But if I go to his VP stage cam shape, you know, his camera that he's created, it's probably in, yeah, right here. When I rotate it around, the lights kind of go with. Um, so I generally want to be in the VP stage cam camera uh, for this, if I want to view it like this. So. If I was doing just a, um, a viewport screenshot, I really like his lighting setup, and so I would just stick with something like this. If you're talking about a um, a rendering, uh, something that you would, you know, like for the assignments, how I would render out some images to stick on the website, I don't know how to do that in Maya very well. Um, I use Substance Painter because I find that a lot easier to use. Um, in that case, what I would do is I would export out the geometry um, and render it in Substance Painter. Um, I know that you use XGen here, so I'll address that at the very end of the video. But for now, I just want to show you the um, the uh, the geometry part of it anyway. So typically, what I would do is I would start by smoothing it out, and then going. I have a little script here. We'll do. It. See if I can remember how to do this. modify, convert, smooth mesh preview to polygons, like that. And so that will just, you know, give me the sort of subdivided geometry, right? So when you go to smooth an item, right, it will hold the edges, but you don't have that option in Substance Painter. So I just like to sort of convert this down. So modify, convert, uh, smooth mesh previous to polygons. And then this is what I would export out, you know, like geometry wise. If you have something that's super dense, um, like the X Gen here, which I'll get to later, you may not want to smooth mesh preview that section. You can see like the sphere, for example, is getting super dense. But if you've got like you know clean meshes with beveled, you know support edges, that kind of thing, then that's what I would do. Um, go to File, Export Selection, and um, I would save it out as an OBJ export. Materials, smoothing, normals set to on, groups off, point groups off, export selection, and uh, we'll just say, we'll just call this Maya export. So, I'm going to open up Substance Painter. Go to File, uh, New, Templates. I'm going to select PBR Metal Rough uh, Algrothra Mythic, however you pronounce that. I think that's the name of the company, actually. Um, everything here can be left as is. The document resolution, this is the resolution of your textures. You can actually change this stuff throughout the process. It's one of the unique things about this program is that you can start at a low resolution texture and then up res it later on, which is kind of remarkable. Um, I'm just going to select 2048, but you know, you could select 20, you know, 1024 or, you know, whatever. Like I said, it's very, very flexible in this program. Um, and then for the mesh, I'm going to select that mesh that was just exported. Hit OK. And now I've got that geometry in the program. 
and this is sort of the viewport that you would use to sort of create textures, um, you know, draw on top of it. I haven't done any UVs, so that's why you see that it's being all funky like this, but, you know, you could, you know, paint directly on top of this thing, you know, do whatever to get your textures going. And if I go to this 3D, 2D view, this is where my UVs are. So you can kind of see that because I haven't dealt with my UVs, you know, this is sort of what I'm getting. Um, but that's for the texturing side of things. For the rendering, what I would do is I would go to view, I'm sorry, I would go to mode, and I'm in the painting mode right now, and so I would just click on rendering eye ray. And that's warming up. And if you look at the top left here, you can see that it has a bunch of iterations. So it goes from, it has, it's maxed out at 1000, because that's what these max samples are set at. Um, it has that, or it also has rendering time, so max 10 seconds. So it hit 136 out of 1000 iterations because it hit this 10 second limit. So I can just up this max time to however long I'm willing to wait. Say like I'm willing to wait 10 minutes for a render. So then these iterations will, it'll just keep improving the render until it hits the max number of iterations I want. And so when you're asking about how do I get like a non-pixelated image, you can see like as I'm rotating around, it's very pixelated. And then when I let it render, the more iterations it does, the less pixelated it will become. Um, you know, within this software. Um, let's say that I don't want this background image, which I never really do. To the right here, you have dome. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to hit clear color. Like so. And... Alright, so... Another thing I can do, let's say that I don't like the aspect ratio of this image. Um, I can click on Override Viewport Resolution, and then I can enter in exactly what I want here. So let's say that I wanted a vertical image. All right, so I'll take this 920 and I'll make it um, 920 for the height, and then 1200 for the width, and then I can you know, rotate around, that kind of thing. Um, speaking of which, in order for me to rotate, I'm holding Alt, middle mouse, to sort of pan it. Alt, right click, to zoom it. And then, Alt, left click, to rotate it. So that's how I'm doing the navigation. Another thing I can do, is I can spin my light so you have here environment rotation and if I hold shift and right click I can rotate my light and you can see this little slider here rotating around right so if I had a character that I wanted to be lit a certain way you know I could totally do that by just sort of rotating the environment light around um, what else uh, what else might be important? So this ground, right? You know, I can put a ground plane in here and I can adjust, uh, you know, I only export exported out the, um, like the character mesh, but I didn't do anything with the ground, right? Like I didn't export any out ground geometry. I don't need to because Substance Painter sort of adds that in for me. But let's say I'm not happy with how the shadow is, you know, I want this to be higher up. Uh, for under this ground, I can click on this Y, and then right here there's a little... I can either adjust the slider, which I find very finicky, um, or I can click on this little button to the right here, and then just keep adding to it. Minus, or I can just click in here and just enter a you know, value however I want. Um, what else would be important? Uh, so that's navigation, viewport resolution, the rendering. I'm going to show you 
some environment maps that you can use. Like right now I'm using the default panorama map, but you can get different looks as well. And if I click on panorama, uh, I can choose like abandoned or like some of these other ones to get different looks. This one right here, for ex the, the color in the map will impact the color in the, the render as well. So this one here that's kind of green um, will have like, it's kind of like if you were to, in, in the real world, if you were to shine like a green light at an object, you know, the, the light, the color of the, the light would impact the color of the object. So cave entry in the forest, you can kind of get an idea of that. I think I tend to lean more towards these sort of black and white ones down here. And... Soft one front, you know, like some of these, I think look kind of nice. And again, it's sort of just sort of playing with it and seeing which ones that you like the best. Um, like I, the three render, the, the three assignments that we've done for the class, those are the only times I've ever done the rendering within this program. So I'm still figuring out what I like best for what assignment. But generally, I personally tend to lean towards these. Um, let's choose, I'll choose this one here, why not? Okay, so let's say that, um, like I'm happy with how my environment map looks, I've rotated the light the way I want it, and I've given it enough time iteration-wise. So you can see like right now it's super pixelated. So, as I give it time uh, to do this, the the better quality the image will be. I think I typically waited around no longer than half an hour for any of the, the images that I did. Um, it, it's a very fast rendering system compared to some of the stuff that I've been using in the past. So, I, I really like Substance Painter for that reason. Um, but let's say that you've done this and you're happy with it. Um, you can, after it's rendered, you can click on this Activate Post Effects tab and start playing around with some of that. This isn't too important, so I'm not going to get into that too much. But you can do things like um, tone mapping, where you can activate that and then just up the exposure a little. Um, I think I may have to finish first, though. Let's see. Yeah, like because it's rendering, it, you might want to wait for this to finish rendering before you do that. But you can kind of see how it sort of um, brightens everything a little bit with this. I'm not going to worry about that too much for now. Um, anyway, let me say this. So, like, let's say that you're done with this and you want to get an image out that you can put on a website like Anim School. Uh, all I do is I click on Save Render, and you know, I can save it as, uh, you know, whatever I want. Let me just check. What did I... I saved these out as JPEGs before. So I'll do that. So render01 JPEG. And if I go to current projects... Yeah, so like now I have that render that I just made in uh, Substance Painter. Okay, so that's the general gist of it. Um, I haven't gone into how it would, would work with textures or anything like that yet. Um, I can totally do that if, if you want. Um, I know that we do a little, I know that we've done some texture work within there, so if you want to know how to do the texturing, let me know and then I'll make a video on how to do that. Um, but I just wanted to show you like how the rendering part of it, how, how I personally approach it. Now I was talking earlier about um, the fact that you use XGen and that you would may want to uh, do something where you create a character with XGen hair and render that out in Substance Painter. Uh, what I, I have never used XGen before, and so, um, but I'll show you what I would do if I had used something like that. 
I would convert XGen hair into geometry, and then I would export that XGen geometry out along with all this stuff here. Um, and let me just pause the video and see if I can find some resources for you. Okay, so I quickly I found two quick little examples. Um, the first was is a written uh, thing by um, Autodesk: convert XGen hair and fur to Maya geometry. Um, so what did I type in to do that? I just typed in Maya XGen into polygons, and it was this first link here: convert XGen hair and fur to Maya geometry. Um, and so you have a written thing here. Which uh, should help, should maybe give you some information about that. If you prefer videos, there is a video by an Autodesk um, user here, uh, Daryl Obert, Maya Monday XGen Outputting Geometry. It's a five and a half minute video or six minute video where he takes XGen hair and converts it into geometry that you can export out to Substance Painter. Um, so I would look into either this. Or this video um, to you know get your XGen hair working within Substance Painter, and again you would just export that along with everything else. Um, gosh, is, is there anything else to say? I think that's the general gist of it. Substance Painter is a really is a really powerful program. I would recommend this for rendering because once you get the hang of it. You can create some nice renders qu pretty quickly. Um, if you want to learn more about Substance Painter, let me dig out the resources um, for that. One second. Yeah, so I just typed in Substance Painter in YouTube, and there is this Substance Painter Crash Course. course. It's a 43-minute video, which I found very helpful. Um, the other more detailed one, which I which I followed, which is really helpful, but it's you know it's a, an entire course, it's a lot longer, is from the company itself, Algorithmic. Really wish I knew how to pronounce that. Um, and it's a 33 video course talking about uh, playlists. Videos. One second. Yeah, okay, I see now. So when you type in Substance Painter in YouTube and you get this, all you have to do is you just click on this thumbnail here. Click that, and it will take you to the beginning of the series. Substance Painter Tutorial Texturing Beginners Course Overview. And you have a little playlist here with all 33 videos. I personally found this incredibly helpful, and it answered the, the the bulk of my questions that I had about the program. Um, so basically, in, what I would do is I would do viewport 2.0 using Charles' uh, method for getting sort of you know viewport sn screenshots things like that, and I would use Substance Painter for if you wanted to you know knock out like a nicer you know, like a nice rendering to stick on something like Anim School website or something. Um, yeah, I, I I hope that helps. If I if I missed anything or if there's more information you want, please let me know, and then you know I'll make a video about it or try and point you towards the right resources or something. All right, hope that helps.